my Govanen. Welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek. And in this video, what I want to talk about is who can actually wield the One Ring? This is a concept that doesn't get a lot of explicit explanation in the book. We do get a lot of hints at who might be able to use it and to what degree. We certainly know that some people would be able to use it more than others. Uh, one of the things that we know is that a person's kind of native power is determinative of to what extent they can use the One Ring to its full potential. But how far does that go? What does that mean for, you know, various different characters in the story, from Frodo all the way up to, say, Aragorn and even Gandalf? So I'm going to look at some passages in The Lord of the Rings that give us a pretty decent idea of what the ring's powers are, how they might be used by different characters, and what those characters are capable of in terms of using those powers. Now, of course, one of the first references that we get to any kind of use of the ring is Gandalf in Bag End basically refusing the ring when Frodo offers it to him, saying, no, do not tempt me. With, you know, if I had the ring, I would have a power too great and terrible, and it would, you know, corrupt me, and basically I would end up being a new Dark Lord. Now, this really is not surprising, because Gandalf, of course, like Sauron, is a Maya. And even though there are references where Tolkien says that Sauron is kind of a higher order than Gandalf in terms of his power level generally, Gandalf is still the same kind of being and therefore presumptively would be able to do a lot with the ring that, you know, say a, a mortal man or even a really great elf would not be able to do. And this, you know, makes sense for a number of reasons. And arguably Gandalf could even be more powerful than Sauron because Sauron's power is what's in the ring. And therefore, Gandalf kind of has his own native power plus part of Sauron's power, whereas Sauron is operating on whatever is left of his own native power minus whatever's in the ring. So, not 100% clear exactly how powerful Gandalf would be, but we don't have any reason to think that he would have any significant limits in terms of what his ability to do anything with the ring would be. So, that's one thing to start with. On the opposite end of the spectrum, of course, we have Frodo, who is the one who actually possesses the ring for the vast bulk of the story. And what exactly could Frodo do with the ring? Well, we don't really get a whole lot of hints on this, but we do get his conversation with Galadriel after he looks into the mirror of Galadriel, and at one point he asks, in the book only, this doesn't happen in the movie, which this is another you know, one of those things where it's like, it would have been nice if it was in the movie, but there's no way you have time for these kinds of conversations. The, the runtime would be way too long. Uh, this is why the book is so important, guys. But he asks Galadriel, he says, you know, I meant to ask this in Rivendell of Gandalf, but why, whenever I put on the ring, can't I see the other rings of power and read the thoughts of those that wear them? And Galadriel basically says, well, you haven't tried. And she even says, you've only put the ring on three times since you even knew what it was, which is interesting in and of itself. How does she know this? Does she know it because Frodo told her or because she's using some kind of, you know, telepathic, you know, mind reading or it adds an interesting concept all into itself, which deserves its own video perhaps. But then she says, do not try. It would destroy you. Didn't Gandalf tell you that, you know, the the ring gives power according to the, you know, the, the strength of its wielder. Uh, and so the implication here is that Frodo could potentially get something out of the ring, but it would probably break him to do it. And she even says you would have to become far stronger than you are now and train your will to the domination of others. So... She gives us a hint here that Frodo, at his current state of, you know, what what he is capable of at the moment, 
probably couldn't really use the ring for much of anything other than its granting of invis invisibility. He might be able to reach to the level of being aware of the other rings of power, specifically the Elven rings and maybe the, the nine born by the Nazgul, and even to read the thoughts of the, the ones wearing those rings, but he would have to become more strong than he is now and train his will to the domination of others. Of course, this is part and parcel of what the ring is all about. The whole purpose of the ring is to be able to dominate the wills of others. That's its purpose. It's, you know, to be able to control anybody else wearing a different ring of power. And this is, you know, this gives us a hint here of what the powers of the ring might be and how it might affect other people, but it also tells us something about who might be able to use it. Can Frodo even achieve anything to the level of, you know, really actually dominating the wills of others with the ring? Because the context of this quote is, he asks, why can't I see the others and, you know, read their thoughts? And Galadriel says, to do even this, he would have to train his will to the domination of others and become far stronger than he already is. Could he reach to that level? Maybe. I mean, she seems to imply that he could, but that it would take a lot of time. But the implication then would be, the step beyond that of actually dominating those wills would take even greater strength, and Frodo would probably never have that. Now, you might argue that with the ring granting effectively what is... It's essentially immortality, uh, but it's not really. But with the additional time, could Frodo just train his will to the domination of others for so long and so much that he eventually could achieve those things and become that strong with the help of the ring itself? And eh, maybe, but I, I tend to doubt it. I think Frodo, like Galadriel says, that Gandalf, you know, she assumes Gandalf told him, which I th think he did, actually, the ring grants power according to the strength of its w user. And... Frodo is never going to be as strong as Sauron. He's just not. No matter how much he trains his will to the domination of others, he's not that powerful. He's never going to be as powerful as Gandalf. He's never going to be as powerful as Aragorn, or even Faramir. Faramir, though not as high as Aragorn, is still a very high, you know, type of person in terms of his lineage of Numenorean descent. Gandalf says that the blood of Numenor runs almost true in him. And or maybe he says that of Denethor, but it, it necessarily applies also to Faramir, arguably truer in Faramir than in Denethor. So Faramir is even a level above Frodo, and you know he's. I don't think Frodo could ever reach to the level of what some of these other characters could do, and therefore we have to assume the ring itself is not going to give all of its, you know, all of its powers are just not going to be available to Frodo. So that gives us a little bit of something there. Now there's also another passage where Gandalf in the Council of the Captains before they leave to assault Mordor in the attempt to distract him from potentially seeing where Frodo is, where he's laying out his basic strategy. And it's kind of a long extended passage with a lot of back and forth, but the summation of it is basically this. He says that Sauron is going to be looking for a time of strife while, you know, some people within their camp fight over who's going to get the ring because that's the nature of what the ring does. I mean, people fight over it. And then he's going to hope that during that period he might be able to suddenly attack and take everybody unawares and, you know, basically win the battle without having to really fight too hard. And he's also going to be looking for you know, who's going to end up claiming the ring and whoever the great one among them that does that is. And he says that because of this, you know, he's going to be looking for this to happen. And he also mentions he, we can't really learn to use the full power of the ring in a day. And then he adds later on, kind of buttressing this point, when he starts talking about his strategy is to attack Mordor and distract Sauron, he says, we're gonna be the bait, and he's gonna say, so he sticks out his neck out he sticks out his neck too soon. 
Sauron, in other words, thinking of what whoever the new Ring Lord is, is going to be thinking that of the Ring Lord because they can't use the power of the Ring all in one day. It can't be learned that fast. And so Gandalf here is telling us a couple of things, one of which is it takes time to develop the ability to use the Ring, which fits in nicely with what Galadriel told Frodo at, at the mirror. But he's also pointing out you know, the the idea that someone among them could actually be powerful enough to use it. Because, and he mentions several things. He mentions the sword of Elendil, which cut the ring from his own finger, as a thing that he's going to be worried about and looking at because that's, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in the battle that are going to make Sauron worry, the death of the Witch King, you know, the, the sword reforged, all these different things are going to be things in his mind that make him worry. And at one point, I, it's either Imra Hill or one of the other captains, but basically says, well, won't he just kind of, you know, laugh at this and think that we're just like a child attacking a castle or something with a, a bow made of reeds? <laughs> and Gandalf said, well, no, it's he's not going to laugh. It's not going to be quite that simple, but he is going to, He's basically going to try to catch the fly and take the sting. So the idea there is that if they attack this soon, they cannot hope to be ready enough to use the ring to really take full advantage of it. But it's still dangerous. It's not a nothing proposition. And the implication is that some among them are great enough that if they did take the time, they would in fact be able to use the ring with significant effect, right? So, presumably, some among them, at least Gandalf, of course, probably Aragorn, and maybe even Imrahil and Faramir are great enough that if they took the time to really develop their powers and, you know, work on those things before attacking Mordor, they would actually be able to use the ring to devastating effect, and Sauron would legitimately be in trouble. So, there's a hint there that some of these characters might have a real shot at using the ring. However, there is also a passage, not in The Lord of the Rings, which bears on this, and I need to bring this in. When Tolkien was going back and looking at the history of the ring and how Isildur lost the ring and gave us a lot more detail, he wrote The Disaster of the Gladden Fields, or at least that's what it's titled in The Unfinished Tales. If you haven't read The Unfinished Tales, there's so much cool stuff in there. You really need to pick up a copy. But this one particular passage is about Isildur on his way back to Arnor after leaving the rule of Gondor in the hands of his nephew and how in detail the orcs attacked and he had to end up fleeing and lost the ring in the river Anduin. And in the process of all this, we actually get a lot of different conversations. And one of those conversations is with his own son. And his son, one I don't remember which son it is, but he's got three of them with him, and two of them end up dying before I think even this conversation happens. But he basically says, why don't you try putting on the ring and commanding the orcs to, you know, back off? And Isildur basically says, I can't. For one thing, the pain is really, really bad, and I'm afraid of the pain of it. And remember... This is this goes back even to the Lord of the Rings, where he says, you know, when he touched it, it was hot as a gleed. A gleed is just a burning coal. And he says in the same parchment that I don't think I'll ever be rid of the pain of it. And so the idea seems to be that even after it cools down, it still causes pain, or at least he's afraid that it will, to put it on. But he also adds, I know now that I am not great enough to know to be able to to use this ring as it really is kind of intended he basically says i you know in my pride i might have thought that i could wield this ring but i know now that i am not that great of a man now this is really important because isildur in the context of the books is unquestionably a greater character than aragorn aragorn in the movies is this guy who starts out very afraid of his past and 
worried about his heritage with Isildur, and it, you know, the the whole line about you were Isildur's heir, not Isildur himself, you were not bound to his fate that Arwen gives him, that line is kind of flipped on its head in the movie, because in the movie the implication is Isildur was trash because he claimed the ring and got corrupted, and you're not going to do that. In the book, that line is kind of the opposite, because when Boromir finds out who Aragorn is at the Council of Elrond for the first time, he looks at him like, you? And Aragorn says, I don't blame you, I look kind of scruffy, and I am only Isildur's heir, not Isildur himself. I don't know that I have his strength, but, you know, I will aid Gondor. So the implication here in the book is actually that Aragorn is admitting, I am not as strong as Isildur. And we have to remember about Isildur. Isildur, by the time of, you know, all this unfinished tale stuff, Tolkien has really kind of reimagined, or at least fleshed out, his story such that Isildur is a serious hero. I mean, the, his rescue of the white tree from destruction by taking one of its fruits and then planting it at the risk of his own life, which he almost lost because he was wounded in the attempt, and then, you know, all the things he does in the War of the Last Alliance and all this other stuff. I mean, Isildur is a really seriously big deal. I mean, he's not a nobody. He's not just some guy in the lineage. He is a legitimate hero. So Aragorn is saying, you know, I, you know, I'm not Isildur. I'm not that great, but, you know, I'm, I still have some strength in my blood here. So the implication by Isildur saying, I am not that great, might tend to imply that even Aragorn would not be able to wield the ring to enough of a potential to control, say, orcs, right? And this seems to be at least assumed to be a power of the ring. And we don't ever really get explicit confirmation of this because Sauron was controlling orcs before he had the ring, of course. And it's not 100% clear that if somebody became powerful enough to really use the ring that they would actually be able to use it to that degree. Would they be able, through the use of Sauron's power, which is within the ring, to control orcs, which... The ring was never needed for, but which Sauron, through his power, could do. That question is a little bit open, I think. there's I don't think there's really enough in any of the texts to really confirm that even Gandalf would be able to command armies of orcs to do whatever he wanted them to do just because he had the ring. But the implication seems to be that that is at least on the table. So, Isildur could be saying something like, I am not great enough to use the ring to that extent. He might even be saying something like, I am not great enough now to use the ring to that extent. And you have to remember, not we don't know how much Isildur was instructed in ring lore by any of the people who really knew much about it at the time, and probably less was known even at that time, than was known later at the time that we get to the time of the Lord of the Rings. So how familiar would he be with the ideas behind all of this and the, the power that it would be required to use it and what powers it even has? Unclear. I mean, we don't know if Elrond had like a long conversation with him explaining why the ring was dangerous and here's why and all this other stuff. That might have happened and it's just not recorded in anything Tolkien wrote. But at least, based on what he's saying, he seems to be at least admitting that at the current power level he had, he would not be able to just put the ring on and control the orcs and order them basically to just back off and let them pass unmolested. Now, you could take his statement farther even than that and say, you know, I'll never be strong enough to control orcs. Does that imply that he would not be able to ever do anything along the lines of dominating the wills of other ring bearers, seeing their thoughts, you know, these other things that we've got in in the other hints that we get from Lord of the Rings. Probably not. I mean, I think Isildur certainly would be able to use the ring to some effect after he, you know, really practiced his mind to, you know, dominating the wills of others, as Galadriel tells Frodo he would need to do. 
And Isildur would have a much better starting point to do that because Isildur, like I said, he is kind of a natural big deal compared to Frodo especially. And so he's got a much better starting point from which to build on that type of thing. So could he become a new ring lord? He wouldn't be a Gandalf with a ring or a Saruman with the ring. He wouldn't be any of those things. But I think he would be a very dangerous and powerful, you know, player in, in the world stage at a minimum. And I think anybody else with, you know, the elves with their rings and maybe even the Nazgul, you know, with their rings, you know, they're active at that point. They might have to worry about Isildur, you know, really claiming the ring and using it because at that point he might be strong enough over time to really control these other people. Now, the one thing in all this that is left a little bit open is what about the effect of the One Ring itself on its user, basically kind of enslaving the user to the ring rather than vice versa? Because as Gandalf tells us in Bag End, you would not possess the ring, it would possess you, right? So the idea there is anybody who's not strong enough to use it, certainly, and arguably anybody other than Sauron himself, is in some sense going to be controlled by the ring rather than the other way around. If Isildur or another mortal claimed the ring, could they become powerful enough and yet at some point become so corrupted by the ring that they don't even really have the willpower to do anything other than what Sauron wants them to do. That's kind of an open question there, and I think that's an interesting realm of you know, speculation, because it's possible that for any mortal, and you know, as we see Gollum descend over the course of 500 years without using the ring so much that he becomes invisible, and yet clearly he's becoming more and more just a slave to the ring, would that happen to Isildur in the same way such that he'd never really be able to use the ring in the way that it was intended because he would become this mean, petty creature rather than strengthening himself into something greater capable of using the ring. You know, I mean, I think there's tendencies there that would work against any mortal who would try to use the ring for its proper purpose because its natural tendency is to make you actually less strong, make you weaker, and, you know, so I think you have to come into it with a lot of native strength and a lot of really, really focused purpose and will to to use it in the way that it's intended or else it's just going to turn you into a golem, basically. Now, granted, Smeagol, of course, starts out at a very low power level and doesn't really know what he's doing with it. So Isildur, if he was going into it with the plan of using it for its intended purpose, might actually come out on the opposite end of that. But it's like I said, not really clear how that would work. Sooner or later, the ring would possess him, as Gandalf says. Does that mean merely that it would corrupt him so much that he wouldn't really have his own will in the matter anymore and he wouldn't be able to throw the ring away? Or does it go farther than that and mean something like, ultimately you're just going to fall prey to the will of Sauron one way or the other, no matter how strong you are? I don't know. The implication from what Galadriel says seems to be that you would be able to, you know, basically continue in using the ring, and if you practiced at it, you could really just, you know, do things that you shouldn't try to do, but potentially could do anyway. And she's telling that to Frodo. So Isildur, I think, like I said, if it was conscious purpose, he would be able to use the ring to a very significant degree. Now, of course, he would become corrupt, and probably because his power level is nowhere near that of Sauron himself, would eventually just invite so much hostility that there might be, you know, someone would overthrow him, ultimately. Uh, I've actually been meaning to do a video on what would happen if Isildur had survived and kept the ring, and I'll probably explore that there. But at the end of the day, history would be, of course, very different. It would be a lot easier to reclaim the ring from Isildur, then reclaim it from Sauron. So, 
and even easier than reclaiming it from, say, Gandalf, if Gandalf ended up with it. We also, of course, know that various characters, you know, Galadriel herself tells Frodo, you know, if I took the ring, instead of a dark lord, you would set up a queen, and I would not be dark but terrible and beautiful as the evening and the morning. All those things. So Galadriel seems to think that she would be able to use the ring with a lot of effect. What exactly that means, she's not very specific, so it doesn't tell us a whole lot. So she's more powerful than Isildur anyway, so how much of that is relevant is unclear. There's also the fact that it's maybe a ring-induced monologue that she's entering into when she says that. Is she speaking from the ring-induced desire to claim it and really do something? Sam, of course, is going to be tempted to take the ring and have all these visions of things that he could do and then snap out of it and realize that would never work. I could never do that. If I put the ring on, I'd just be caught. So, you know, how much of Galadriel's own, you know, speech there is even realistic versus this is just what she thinks she'd be able to do, right? That That's not a very good data point, I don't think, in terms of really giving us an idea, but I think it I think it's probably at least kind of accurate because Galadriel is so powerful as an elf, she's way above the level of a Sildur, and she already has her own elven ring, let's not forget. So she would be able to do a lot with the ring. Now, how far would that go? Unclear whether her speech is really an accurate depiction of that, but it's probably mostly true. So at the end of the day, what we're looking at is a Sildur doesn't think he's strong enough. Gandalf seems to imply Aragorn and maybe some other people at the Council of the Captains would be strong enough to at least be a threat, you know, a real danger. Gandalf, of course, thinks that he would be so powerful that he would be a new ring lord. Galadriel tells Frodo, you know, it would destroy you to try, you know, at, at least at, as you are now. So, some of these characters could use the ring to some effect, and it really does depend on their inherent power level. Aragorn, I think, given that he is the heir of Elendil, and is kind of like a renewal of the kingship. I mean, when he's, you know, we get the impression from things written about him that he is greater than many of the kings preceding him, and therefore he's probably more powerful than most of the kings since Elendil and Isildur. So he's up there, and Gandalf, of course, is way up there. He would be able to use it. Aragorn, I think, would be at least dangerous enough to take down Sauron in his weakened state. Frodo would never be able to do something like that. And Galadriel probably, of course, is more powerful even than Aragorn. If we start looking at somebody more like Faramir, you know, powerful but not as powerful as Aragorn probably would never be able to control, you know, like, orcs armies or things like that. I kind of doubt whether Aragorn even could, because Isildur doubting himself and the ability to do that, you know, maybe that's just, you know, excess humility taking effect because of the, <laughs> the fact that he realizes he's in a really bad situation because of his own stupidity. Um, but still, his doubt as to that fact makes me think that Isildur is recognizing something that you know, he might be able to use the ring for some really dangerous purposes, but it's never gonna, he's never gonna be able to do that. And if he can't do that, presumably Aragorn can't do that. And if Aragorn can't control orc armies, it's gonna be really hard for him to really, you know, just crush Sauron in a way that, say, maybe Gandalf could. So I think that's kind of a decent ranking of where people stand. Gandalf with the ring would eventually become so powerful that he would crush all resistance and become just a tyrant. Aragorn would be powerful enough to defeat Sauron, but not absolutely crush him, and probably not be able to hold that permanently. And the same would go for Isildur. Someone a little lower, Imrahil, Faramir, you know, they would be able to do dangerous things with it. Probably not ever, you know, really win in a straight-up contest with Sauron. Frodo and other people on his rough level, and that would include just, you know, your average common folk of Gondor, your average hobbit, whatever, they probably would never be able to do much 
even beyond just like trying to read the thoughts of other ring bearers, which is something, but it's it doesn't give you a whole lot of advantage in a battle with Sauron, for sure. So that gives us a pretty decent scheme as to who can use the ring to what effect and what that would look like. Like I said, the question of whether Gandalf or maybe even Galadriel could use the ring to control orc armies, that's still not really clear. Maybe somebody with enough power could, because it is Sauron's power in the ring, and it's ultimately Sauron controlling the orcs, not the ring. But it's, you know, because Sauron is controlling the orcs even without the ring. So whether or not the power in the ring is enough to, to do kind of the same thing, maybe... It would certainly be enough with enough power to control the Nazgul. Could Aragorn reach to that level? Mm, maybe, because after all, it's the ring that really controls them. And therefore, even though he might not be able to control the orcs, he might be able to turn the Nazgul against Sauron. So that's a dangerous thing in and of itself, because the Nazgul are dangerous, dangerous weapons. Um, but that's, you know, about as clear as I think we can get. So... I hope this was interesting. If you can think of any other passages that really bear on this question, bring them up in the comments. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up, share it around, subscribe on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, or catch me on Podcatchers. You can also find me at Twitter at JRRTLore, and you can uh, support me over at Patreon. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namariye.